I am Mishra Kumar and I have been involved in the manufacturing and designing of rubber fenders and rubber compounding for more than 15 years. This webinar is going to explore the effect that rubber composition has on fender performance. As we know, a typical fender system is made from two critical parts. Firstly, the fender frontal frame fabricated to withstand the forces applied and distribute load safely onto the vessel's hull. Secondly, the rubber fender, which is compressed during birthing, absorbing the vessel's kinetic energy. Just to make it clear, there are various types and sizes of rubber fenders, and this presentation relates to all of them. It is important to recognize that fender systems are a highly engineered product. They require technical, engineering, rubber chemistry and process knowledge to ensure that the overall systems as well as the subcomponents are all designed correctly and work together correctly. Both the rubber and steel components are critical to the operational success of the system. Both are technically complex. However, while steel design and fabrication is a topic that most engineers readily understand, Rubber is a very different proposition. Generally, there is a very limited understanding about compound quality and its impact on performance and longevity. Moreover, current test methods, specifications and quality control practices are unable to establish the quality of the fender material. No tool is currently available to test the rubber composition of commercial fenders. Trelleborg has undertaken an extensive testing program investigating the rubber composition of fenders at many ports around the world. Our findings indicated a wide range of compound variability as well as differences in the physical appearance of the fenders. It was clear from the result that fenders that had deteriorated had done so primarily as a result of rubber composition rather than actual age. A fender is made of rubber, a viscoelastic material that allows for large elastic deflection, unlike almost all other materials known today. The large deflections allow fenders to absorb the kinetic energy of a moving vessel by elastic deformation. Therefore, the rubber unit is the essence of a fender system. Apart from absorbing energy, rubber has a unique set of properties. For example, it quickly recovers to its original dimension after compression. It is tough under static and dynamic stress. It has higher abrasion resistance than steel. It is resistant to seawater and chemicals. It is capable of bonding with steel and fabric. These properties are true not only at room temperature, but at minus 60 degree centigrade to 300 degree centigrade in an ozone-rich environment. There are three main types of rubber used to produce fenders. Raw natural rubber, which is derived from the rubber tree. Raw synthetic rubber, whose main source is crude oil. The third category is recycled or reclaimed rubber. Recycled rubber is produced from waste rubber goods. It generally contains 40 to 50 percent of virgin rubber and the remainder is fillers and contaminants. One thing needs to be noted. Fenders cannot be produced directly from raw rubbers. Raw rubbers need to be converted to rubber compound before a fender is produced. Rubber compound is basically a mixture of raw rubber with different chemicals and fillers. Let me point out the justification of using natural rubber and synthetic rubber for manufacturing fenders. Natural rubber has good mechanical properties, but those properties deteriorate and drop in the presence of heat, oxygen, ozone, and UV. Synthetic rubber, for example, SBR, helps in maintaining those properties for a long time. Recycled rubber is used to reduce the cost of the fender. Its physical properties are much lower than natural rubber or SBR. Now the question is, why do we need to add chemicals to formulate a rubber compound? 
The reason is very simple. Raw rubbers are weak and have tensile strength close to 4 to 5 megapascal. A fender needs a tensile strength of 13 to 16 megapascal for a long service life. Tensile strength of raw rubber is increased by adding carbon black to it. Carbon black not only increases tensile strength but also improves other physical properties and that's why carbon black is called reinforcing filler. White fillers are added to reduce the cost of fenders. They do not improve physical properties and are usually called non-reinforcing fillers. Calcium carbonate is one example of such white fillers. Most of the reinforcing fillers are tiny in size and hence difficult to mix with rubber. Therefore, oil is added to facilitate the mixing process. Antioxidants are added to protect rubber from sunlight, oxygen, ozone and heat. Raw rubber is soft due to its lack of hardness and strength. It needs curing or vulcanization. Vulcanization is a chemical process by which rubber chains are linked through sulfur. So, it is important to add sulfur and accelerator to rubber and cure it at a high temperature and under pressure to make it a commercially useful product. All the different chemicals to produce a rubber compound can be classified into four major categories, raw rubber, black filler, oil and white filler. For a superior compound, the amount of ingredients follow a pyramidal structure in which rubber sits at the bottom followed by filler. Hence, the polymer to filler ratio becomes more than one for a technically superior rubber compound. If a fender manufacturer wants to reduce the cost of fenders, the compound cost needs to be reduced because compound cost is around 70 to 80 percent of the total cost. To reduce the compound cost, the cost of both the rubber and filler must go down. Recycled rubber is three times cheaper than virgin rubber and white fillers are six times cheaper than carbon black. We have observed through our test that most low-cost fenders are produced from cheap recycled rubber and non-reinforcing white fillers. With this compounding knowledge, we can now define the chemical composition of a superior rubber compound. For a superior compound, there should be more rubber and less filler. Rubber to filler ratio should be more than one. There should be low percentage of recycled rubber and white fillers or none at all. The density must be less than 1.2. A chemically superior rubber compound comes with a set of properties that is usually specified in purchase contracts and manufacturer's catalog. Let's understand the current quality control practices in the industry. Physical properties are tested on rubber compounds in the manufacturer's laboratory and based on those test results, test certificates are produced and supplied to buyers. No chemical or physical properties are specified or tested by getting samples from the fender body because it is not easy to prepare test samples from commercial fenders without destroying them. You may ask the question, why do we need a superior rubber compound to produce fenders? The answer lies in the impact of rubber quality on factory test performance, performance at high speed berthing, fender longevity and application at extreme temperature. Our test showed that superior compounds provide repeatability in performance and better recovery after compression at the factory when fenders are tested at 1 mm per second compression speed. Fender compression tests are conducted at 1 mm per second at the factory. However, actual berthing occurs at speeds between 50 to 500 mm per second. Due to its inherent viscoelastic properties, fender performance changes with berthing speed. Therefore, fenders should be tested 
at actual birthing speed to determine their true performance. Testing commercial fenders at high speed is difficult due to a lack of suitable equipment. To compensate the performance difference, velocity factor was introduced by Pianc. Two elements significantly affect velocity factor, compression time and type of rubber used in the formulation. Fenders made of 100% natural rubber have a low velocity factor whereas 100% SBR fenders have high velocity factor. Using a superior rubber compound has a dramatic impact on the life cycle of fenders. To demonstrate this, we took two test pieces. One test piece made of 20% recycled rubber, the other test piece made of 75% recycled rubber. We applied the Arrhenius equation to predict the life of test pieces at different temperatures. We found that higher temperatures reduce the predicted life cycle of both superior and inferior compounds. But interestingly, we observed that predicted life was reduced by 6 to 10 times for the inferior rubber compounds as temperatures goes up. It is evident that rubber composition is crucial in determining the longevity of fenders. Fenders are usually tested at 23 plus minus 5 degree centigrade. Fender performance varies depending upon the application temperature. To accommodate this difference in performance, temperature factor was introduced by Pianc. Again, temperature factor is highly sensitive to type of rubber used and percentage of rubber in a compound. Therefore, compound composition is the key to achieving fender performance at extreme temperature. We have understood that rubber composition must be defined and well controlled to design a risk-free fender system. Engineers understand steel, hence steel is specified well and tested against specification using samples from the final product. However, determining the chemical composition of rubber compound from the fender is not practiced or specified. Our new analytical method takes care of those issues. The new tool helps in comparing high and low quality fenders. It is a reliable test method to confirm the quality of fenders prior to delivery. The good news is that only a small amount of sample is needed for testing and samples can be collected directly from the finished product without destroying the fender. Let me explain the experiment behind the development of the analytical tool. We selected two commercial size fenders for testing, one high quality fender and one low cost fender. We cut rubber blocks from the fender body from both fenders. We sliced thin rubber sheets from the rubber blocks and then punched samples as per ASTM D412 standard for testing physical properties. We had also collected 50 grams of sample from the fender body for chemical analysis. We used a TGA and FTIR analytical equipment in a third party laboratory to carry out chemical analysis. TGA and FTIR are widely used in the tire industry to accurately determine chemical composition of rubber compounds. We found from the test results that the tensile strength of the low cost fender was only 9.3 MPa compared to the required value 16 MPa. The elongation at break was also below specification. We found it to be only 278% compared to the minimum requirement of 350%. It is important to note that the low cost supplier provided a test certificate with values showing more than what was specified on requirement. Chemical analysis of the two fenders revealed that the low cost fender has a low polymer percentage, low carbon black percentage, but high percentage of ash and calcium carbonate. Critically, the rubber to filler ratio was less than one for the low cost fender. On the basis of various test data, we identified two important indicators of quality for
for superior fenders. The two indicators are rubber to filler ratio and density. Our research showed that for fender applications, the rubber to filler ratio should be more than 1.2. The density should be less than 1.2. A density of more than 1.2 indicates a high percentage of recycled rubber and white non-reinforcing filler in the compound formulation. To test our hypothesis, we took samples from actual fenders that are still being used in different ports in Australia. We found that for cone fenders, the rubber to filler ratio was more than 1.2 for high quality fenders and always less than 1.2 for chief fenders. Rubber to filler ratio for a cell fender from a low cost Japanese supplier was less than 1.2, but for a high quality Japanese supplier, the ratio was more than 1.2. Similarly, the density for low cost fenders was observed always to be higher than 1.2 as indicated in the next two slides. A low cost Japanese supplier was no exception. Based on our studies of experimental data, we propose a new specification to be included in the purchase parameters along with the existing compound specification for the rubber element. The new spec will include the chemical composition of rubber compound. But the specification alone does not guarantee that buyers are getting what they are paying for. The specification has to be substantiated by test procedure in which rubber samples will be taken before and after production and samples will be taken both from the rubber compound and final product for testing. The detailed procedure is given in this slide. In real terms, this boils down to a performance, service life and price trilemma. I think buyers really have only two choices. It is just impossible to get all three at the same time. Performance and rubber quality, an indirect measure of service life, do not come cheap. Any supplier can supply cheap fender, and whilst it may last a few years, it will not withstand high forces acting on it for long service life. If buyers assume that they are buying a good fender at cheap price, believe me, those fenders do not perform adequately in actual application. Millions of dollars are being invested in establishing and upgrading ultra-modern port facilities, but those man-made structures will be at risk from the beginning if enough attention is not paid to optimizing fender selection and if procurement takes place based solely on upfront cost without decisions being made based on fender life cycle.